Welcome to the Berman Golf Podcast, where we're helping golfers over the age of 60 increase distance off the tee so that they can hit shorter irons into the green. Yeah, baby. You can visit us at BermanGolf.com for more information and get ready. This is going to be a fun one. And we are rolling, baby, with the Long Balls Golf Podcast. Dr. Jake Berman here with you, the originator of the Berman Method of Golf Performance, where we help you move better so you can hit the ball further and strike the ball more consistently without nagging aches and pains. So specifically, if you're an aging golfer, a lot of times what's limiting your ability to play quality golf is nagging aches and pains. Popping a couple Advil before the round, popping a couple at the turn, popping a couple at the uh, 19th hole with a couple of uh, vodkas on top of it, trying to ease the back pain, trying to get the swing juice loosened to loosen the whole body up. That's what I focused on is because who would have thought in Southwest Florida, there would be an overabundance of aging golfers that love the game and are significantly limited in their ability to enjoy the game, mainly because they're losing distance, their ball striking is going to crap, and their bodies just are not allowing them to do it. They started off playing four to five times a week, then they went to two to three times a week, and then they're lucky if they can play nine holes once a week because they got to let their back rest. They can't go on the golf trip with the guys anymore. They can't go to all the fun places around the country and even world because what's the point if we drop 10, 20, 30 grand on this golf trip and you can't even play it. So that's what I did. I'm a biomechanics expert by trade, doctor of physical therapy. And that's how I got started in my physical therapy business is helping golfers get back to playing golf without back pain. And that ultimately evolved into helping golfers move better even if you didn't have back pain so that you can hit the ball further and strike the ball more consistently. We primarily work with aging golfers. So golfers over the age of 60, which is what's really helped us niche down because so many golfers over the age of 60 struggle with the same exact things. Losing distance, inconsistent ball striking. And then the third most common is nagging aches and pains. So it's almost like all three of them work together. However, I think the biggest one, the biggest one that's the catalyst for all of this is losing distance. Most golfers don't care about back pain. Most golfers will play through back pain for years, just popping Advil or icing, resting, stretching, whatever it is, most golfers don't care about back pain until it starts messing with their distance, until it starts messing with their ball striking. That's when back pain becomes a problem or an acute problem to them. If it wasn't for the loss of distance or poor ball striking, most golfers would just rely on Advil and alcohol and stretching and just continue playing and wouldn't address it at all. So one of the things, I guess three of the things that I wanted to talk about today is some real simple things that you can address to help minimize the chances of increased stresses on your body, help maximize chances of not losing or actually gaining distance and improving ball striking. And it's really simple, not necessarily really easy. And a lot of you are going to shake your head and say that I've heard this a million times. But here's the reason why I'm going to say it. Right now, I'm recording this in the end of October 2024, which is the beginning of our quote unquote snowbird season here in Southwest Florida, where a ton of people from the Northeast are flocking down south to avoid the harsh winters of the year and enjoy the beautiful sunshine, 360 days a year of sunshine down here in Naples. So over the past few weeks, I've met 23 or 24 guys over the age of 60. And all of these guys had at least one of these issues. 
grip, alignment, stance. Grip, alignment, stance. So before we even initiate a backswing, we've got to make sure that we've optimized grip, alignment, and stance. Now, I know, again, there's going to be some of you that are shaking your head going, this is bullshit. I've already done this. This is not my problem at all. Here's the sheer statistics of it. Out of the 20 whatever people that I've met over the past few weeks, all over the age of 60, 100% of them had at least one of these being an issue. The most common being stance, where they're not maintaining spine angle as they bend over to get down to the golf ball. They're rounding their shoulders to get down to their golf ball. They're not maintaining posture or spine angle. They're rounding the shoulders and bending their thoracic spine, flexing their thoracic spine to get down to the golf ball. Now, if you've heard any of my initial podcasts on this channel, you'll know that thoracic flexion or rounding of your upper back is the quickest way to guarantee that you cut your shoulder turn in at least half and you compensate in one way or another, either by bending your elbows at the top of the backswing to get a further backswing or hyperextending your low back, essentially standing up to get the club back further. Either way, neither one of them are efficient because you're blocking your thoracic spine. It's not allowing it to turn anymore. So that's going to lead directly lead to a compensatory movement. So that's with stance. And then the other two are grip and alignment. Grip is a simple one, right? You can never, ever check your grip too often. Because it's one of those things that we just take for granted. And for whatever reason, because we do it over and over again, it's one of the easiest ones to kind of go out of whack and one of the easiest ones to get back into whack. So make sure you check your grip. And the best thing to do when checking your grip is have somebody else check your grip, specifically a pro that knows what they're looking for. Check the grip. Alignment. Oh my goodness, alignment. So the most common thing that 20-something people that I've met over the past few weeks had that was inefficient was stance. The second most common was alignment. And the amount of excuses, or I'm doing air quotes right now, reasons why people are exaggerating a closed stance, exaggerating an open stance, don't even know that they're doing a double cross where they're feet and shoulders are closed and their their shoulders are open or vice versa. The amount of people that didn't, didn't have any idea that the feet and the hips and the shoulders were not even close to proper alignment was at least 15 of the 23. At least 15 of them. They just, they it might have only been off a half inch or an inch, but it was still off. And these are three things that give you a chance to execute a good golf swing. Said differently, if you don't do these three things, it makes it exponentially harder to execute a good golf swing. This is something that I mentioned many podcasts ago after listening to an interview of John Rahm. And in that interview, the interviewee asked Rahm, what's a single piece of advice you could give to amateur golfers? And he said, spend more time on the basic fundamentals before you even start swinging the golf club. And Rom's saying, so many people don't spend enough time on just alignment alone. You just get up to the golf ball, look at it, look at your target and whack it. If your feet are open, your hips are closed, your shoulders are open, your brain is going to get confused. Subconsciously, your brain is going, wait a minute. I know what the goal is. The goal is to project this object in that direction, but I'm not set up to where my body can actually do it. This is all things that's happening in fractions of a second subconsciously. That has nothing to do with conscious ability. This is all going on subconsciously. So your brain's going, okay, the only way that I'm going to be able to give myself a chance at executing this shot is if I do an over-the-top loop-de-loop and try to manipulate it with my hands at impact, standing up at the golf ball and 
early extension and just doing some type of compensatory movement to try to give yourself a chance. Your brain knows this. And then our conscious brain goes, what in the hell just happened? Well, what just happened was you didn't set yourself up for success. So we've got to spend more time on the things that we can actually control. The things that we can do before we even start moving. Grip alignment stance. Put the alignment rods down on the ground at your feet. And then walk away and go look at where they're pointing. At least 50% of the time, it's not in the direction you want it to go. At least. I mean, I'm telling you, this is very, very common. I've worked with hundreds of golfers over the past couple of years out on the driving range. And I cannot tell you how many times it's so true where it's like, wait a minute. It feels like I'm pointing right at the, the target. But in actuality, your feet are so far open that the only option that you have is to do an over-the-top swing, faces wide open, creating this huge, massive banana slice. It's like, no wonder you're not even giving yourself a chance. And one of the most common excuses is, well, I've got a bad back, I've got a bad hip, I've got a bad knee, and, and some golf pro in some club somewhere down the line said that if I wanted to increase my backswing, I had to close down my stance and my trail light, my trail leg, bring it way back so that I could get a bigger backswing. And it's like, wait a minute, because you have a bad hip, because you have a bad knee. Now I can tell you with 100% certainty, because this is my expertise, biomechanics is my expertise. That's just not true at all. That does not do anything good for your golf swing. If anything, it makes it so much harder to do what you actually need to do. It makes it so much more inefficient, which means that you're going to have to rely on your hands getting the club head to the golf ball versus relying on your body to get the club head to the golf ball. So if we start over at the beginning, grip, alignment, and stance over and over and over again. Just try to bang it into your brain. Grip, alignment, and stance. And one of the easiest things that you can do is if you're out on the driving range, if you're inside banging balls on a simulator, just pick a spot, a foot, five feet, 10 feet in front of the golf ball, and that's your target. Once you get into the, your address position, think about that club face pointing right through the golf ball at that target. Then look down the shaft of the club and say, okay, it, do I have a forward press right now? Do I have the toe of the club head way up off the ground? This is another extremely common thing because you're not maintaining spine angle to get down to the golf ball and you're just rounding your shoulders to get down to the golf ball. The heel is on the ground and the toe is way up off the ground. And it's like, wait a minute. This game is already hard enough as it is. It is already hard enough to make solid contact with that golf ball. Now you're decreasing the amount of surface on that club face that you actually have a chance to make good contact because the club face is supposed to be flat on the ground, not the heel on the ground and the toe way up in the air. But most of us don't even know that it's happening. You can't even see it. And it's we're talking about a fraction of an inch, an eighth of an inch, the toe is up in the air. How significant is an eighth of an inch when you're swinging that club head 70, 80, 90, 100, 120, 130 miles an hour? It's really freaking significant, like exponentially, like the most significant. So take your time, really look at these things. And then more importantly, do it over and over again. Just because you practiced grip, alignment, and stance last week doesn't mean that you don't practice it again this week. Just because you did it six months ago doesn't mean that you don't do it again today. At least once a uh, driving range session, I'm doing it myself where I'll hit some balls and then five or 10 balls later, I will get to my address position I will stop, I'll drop the club down on the ground so the shaft of the club is my quote-unquote alignment stick of my feet and I'll walk away and I'll go, 
is it railroad tracks? Are the shaft of the club and the golf ball going in parallel in the direction that I want them to go? And I cannot tell you how many times it wasn't perfect. They were slightly off. And slightly off is all you need to have inconsistency. So take your time and practice the fundamentals. Gas, grip alignment stance, grip alignment stance, grip alignment stance over and over again because the game is already hard enough as it is. Don't make it harder than it needs to be. If you're losing distance, now you really need to focus on it. If you're having poor ball striking or inconsistent ball striking, this should be screaming sirens and bright red lights going off saying something is not right. It's so hard to be consistent if you don't have your feet, your hips, and your shoulders all pointing in the right direction. If you want me to look at your setup, take a screenshot from down the line from behind you and straight on. Email me those, send them over to me, distance at bermangolf.com. Let me see it. And I'll tell you straight up, we'll put it into Sportsbox AI and we'll put it into the the system and pull it up on the big screen and say, okay, it is really, really close and it's good enough. Or, wow, your feet are open. Your hips are closed. Your shoulders are closed. No wonder you're double crossing yourself and coming over the top or whatever it is that you're doing. Let's try adjusting this. It's probably going to feel really awkward. I can't tell you a single time that I address somebody's alignment and they didn't say, are you serious? It feels like I'm really closed now. It feels like I'm really open. This feels really weird. If it doesn't feel weird, it's probably not different enough to be significant. So try that out. Send me those pictures over. I'll check them out. And make sure you like, subscribe, and share this podcast. Share this with somebody that you know opens their stance up because they got a bad left knee. Share this episode with somebody that you know puts that trail leg way behind them because they think that that's giving them a bigger shoulder turn. Share this with them. Let them hear the message for themselves. Until next time, thanks for listening. Thank you very much for tuning in this week. For more information, please go to bermangolf.com. That's B as in boy, E-R-M-A-N, bermangolf.com, and check out a ton of stuff that we have there. Or even better, go to our socials, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, or even on TikTok. Check us out everywhere. We've got tons of content going out every week. And please give us a thumbs up. Comment on the videos. Let me know what your questions are. Try to shoot holes in this. I'll do whatever I can to help you out the best that I can. Thank you, guys.